and uh, one more time hello everybody nice to see you here and uh, please let me congratulate you on the very special day which celebrate orthodox christians today is epiphany so my best wishes and first of all strong health now we can continue as usually uh, and uh, this is next lecture um, from our circle devoted to the Russian native breeds non recognized yet by the FCI this is the Russian hunting spaniel and I as usually before to analyze the provisions of the standards before to give the comments to these provisions I will tell you about the approach I will use for the better explanation for the deeper understanding of these provisions and this is the model approach it includes two models biomechanical model of the dogs and harmonic model of the dogs the first model is devoted to the soundness of the dogs as well as the second one to the harmony these models are resulted by long years researches done by me during 24 years from 1963 to 1987 and uh, are based on the specifics of the Soviet breeding strategy. According to that strategy, the only breeding commission of each breed club was in charge of breeding plan a year. And since 1963, during almost 30 years, I have been chairman of that commission, first in the Doberman Club and later on in the Schnauzer Club. <coughs> in some periods, that plan included per year about three to four hundred broad bitches. So you can see statistics was really huge. And uh, all hypotheses appear during breeding process were checked for their trustfulness. Just a moment. <coughs> A biomechanical model of the dogs is the integrity of postulates. And harmonic model of the dogs is the integrity of harmonious proportions. <coughs> <coughs> Later on, I have defended the doctoral dissertation in biology named Dog Confirmation Improvement Through Biomechanical Model of the Dogs. So the previous hypothesis became afterwards status of scientifically proven facts. Therefore, <coughs> sorry. You can fully trust them and use in your practice. Both biomechanical model and harmonical model are of practical value. Judges can find here universal reference points which help them to increase the objectivity of their assessment. And uh, breeders can find here the selective algorithm for the acceleration of their breeding progress. Uh, now I am ready to introduce you to the biomechanical model. Uh, this drawing, you can see a lot of lines and uh, some angles. Step by step, I will explain you what does it mean. The very first postulate is the postulate about the ratio between the anatomical provisions of the top line of the uh, spinal column 
And according to this ratio, back or thoracic part of the spine, lumbar part or loin, and rump or sacrum create proportion to one one. When two units fall to the actual back or thoracic part of the spinal column, one unit falls on the loin, and the last one unit falls on the sacrum. So, two one one proportions of the top line is the postulate number one. And I would like to emphasize that the uh, postulate number one is the first one, not only because of the order, but because of the value, to be explained later on. Next postulate is concerning angle by the axis of the pendulum. I use the term pendulum quite uh, uh, not textually, but this term is uh, suitable to me to use it uh, easier. So, conditionally called pendulum is created by two blue lines. The first one is along the median line of the shoulder blade, and the second one connects hip, joint, and the iliac tuber. And the point of intersection is created the angle, which meaning is 90 degrees. Or with other words, as I told you already, this is the axis, um, this is the angle by the axis of the pendulum, 90 degrees. This is a postulate number two. The postulate number three is postulate named two verticals. Katyusha, дайте мне, пожалуйста, картинку с двумя красными вертиками. I follow this way, so I will not change it. And uh, the postulate number three will be postulate about two horizontal lines which connects the first one, shoulder joint or humeral scapula and hip joint, and the second one connects the elbow joint and knee joint or stifle. Uh, let me draw your attention. Uh, the beginning of the upper red line connects a uh, joint, and uh, joint here, as well as the second one connects also joint, not elbow alna, the actual joint and stifle joint. So, these uh, pairs of joints lie on two horizontal lines first one and the second one. Now it will be demonstrated, postulate about two verticals. At this drawing you can see that the elbow joint and top of with us lie on one vertical line, as well as the knee joint is exactly under the tail set. So, the first vertical is this one, and elbow is located exactly under the top of the withers, and the right one vertical means that the stifle joint and tail set belong to the vertical line. Uh, this is the uh, conclusion uh, which belongs to the previous postulate, and uh, I will give you the explanation afterwards. Okay, we can use this one. So, 
according to this postulate, the center of gravity lies on the vertical line lowered from the point of interse intersection of two blue lines or from the um, axis of the pendulum. The length of the body and the distance between front and the rear limbs is the same. Uh, or better to say, are the same. I have to um, draw your attention. The beginning of this red line starts from point of sternum, not from point of humerus scapula. Otherwise, we will lose part of the chest um, or part of the body, and the whole length will be not complete. It is complete only in this case, when we measure from the point of sternum to the back, <coughs> to the end of buttocks. And uh, this red line connects front and rear legs or limbs. If the dog uh, uh, is um, in correct zootechnical position, what does it mean? That the elbows are located under the body and the rear legs, at least one of them, is placed behind to the vertical rear pasta. So in this case, this length and this distance will be equal. That's it. That's it. Now I am ready to give you very short comments to each of um, postulates. Even I shouldn't do that because, as you know, the postulate, which doesn't need to be proven. Anyway, I will give you the essential explanation very briefly. So, yes, thank you very much. So, coming back to the very beginning, I have to remind you that the first postulate is postulate regarding proportions between the anatomical provisions of the spinal column, of the spine, according to which actual back or thoracic part of the spine loin and sacrum create proportion two one one which means that the actual back is the biggest part longest part of the top line and loin and sacrum represent short parts of the spine uh, I cannot give you the explanation why these uh, numbers reflect exactly uh, the deep reason. It will be done afterwards in the framework of the harmonious uh, model. Now I can only say to you at the uh, qualitative level, longest part and two short parts. Uh, if the dog is built according to this ratio, then dog will be compact. The top line will be strong. The chest will be deep. And in the first approximation, the front and the rear angulations will be correct and in balance, as well as the format of the body will be correct. Uh, what does it mean, format? It is um, a very typical 
um, Russian index, according to which the ratio between length of the body and height at withers are multiplied 100. So, this is the index of the form. What does it mean, strong top line? It's easy to understand. Deep chest means that the breastbone reaches to the elbow, at least elbow ulna, sometimes to the elbow joint level. <coughs> and uh, compact dog means that this is a dog with a short loin. Sometimes people think that the compactness is the same as the square body. And this is wrong, because of a very nice example, I can remind you Dachshund, one of the longest bodied dogs, which should be compact according to the standard. And this is based on the short loin. Uh, what sense is inside of this statement? Easy. This is the chest part or front part of the body. And uh, this is the hind part. And distance between them is resulted by the length of the loin. If loin is short, the body is compact, because these two parts are close to each other. If the loin is long, the distance between first part and second part is big. And in this case, the dog is built not compact. Uh, Something else about the value of this postulate. Why uh, the actual back, why the requirement of the relatively long actual back is so important? Because if the actual back is long, do not forget that this is the upper part of the rib cage. That means the rib cage is long. Besides that, during the researches, was proven that the length of the chest uh, leads to the depth of the chest. So depth of the chest is determined by the length of the chest. That's why Two dimensions, depth and length of the rib cage, uh, provide great room, great volume of, of the chest. We don't order too wide the chest, too broad the chest, because otherwise it will uh, violate the positions of the shoulder blade and the upper arm, and they will deviate from the longitudinal axis of the body, so it will destroy the translational movement. So, one more time, long back means long chest, and leads to deep chest. This is important because in the rib cage are located heart, lung, and general blood vessels. And uh, roomy chest provide the best possibility for the best development. On other hand, when we consider length of the loin, we can understand that in case of the short loin, its oscillation amplitude, do not forget that the loin, when dog is moving, uh, 
is the spring which transmits the motive thrusts from the rear to the front along the top line. So, short loin, uh, when it is oscillating, its amplitude will be not a big. And the loin is involving in the same process of the oscillation, the last part of the back, where back is not supported by the breastbone, because four pairs of false ribs are not connected to the breastbone. That's why in this part, back is very vulnerable. But small oscillations and a small amplitude of these oscillations do not destroy so much back in this part. Unlike when uh, the loin is becoming long. In this case, oscillation of this loin are increasing and the amplitude is also increasing. And the amplitude of the oscillation of the last part of the back are also increasing. And in this cage, in this case, it is very dangerous because with the age and loading, this part of the back becoming soft, sagging. And uh, this is the soft back later on in general. So long loin is the cause of the soft back and uh, now it is quite uh, easy to understand why usually for the majority of the breeds we order the short loin. <coughs> Sacrum is upper part of the croup and croup consists of upper part, pelvis, muscles and tendons located in this area. So, and if the sacrum is short, it does not mean that the croup is short, because the length of the croup is mostly determined by the length of the sciatic bones, and the development uh, determine, finally, the length of the croup as the whole. Just a moment. <coughs> this is the uh, short explanation of the postulate number one. Uh, and as I promised you, 211 will be explained later on these numbers. Now uh, we go to the second one, postulate number two, which is 90 degrees by the axis of the pendulum. In this case, these blue lines provide uh, uh, balanced movement which is based on the equality of the front and rear strides. Later on, you will see when we will uh, consider uh, dock movement. They create preconditions for the balanced movement. Besides that, uh, it is easy to understand that the slant of the shoulder blade and uh, slant of the iliac bone are not independent and their dependency is based on the 90 degrees angle. When dog is trotting, these lines, lines are oscillating contrary. 
they are in antiphase. And because of the initial horizontal position, the hip joint will go up so much as uh, the knee joint will go down. That's why the oscillation compensate each other. And uh, finally, this oscillation will not disturb the top line, which remains horizontal. The level position or horizontal position of the spinal column is very important uh, for the best transmission of the motive thrust from the rear to the front. Because, as I told you already, the motive thrusts are transmitting along the top line. And when the top line is horizontal, the dog should not work to lift center of gravity. And that's why it's not tiring. That's why, one more positive effect is that the overbuilt construction is blocked because ramp is not going up due to the mechanism I explained you just before. <coughs> <coughs> On other hand, you can understand that there is a lot of uh, positions either of the upper arm or upper thigh when could be slanted differently. Like this, like that, and this, like this, like that. And uh, the only one position will provide the optimal uh, meaning of the front and rear angulations. When these uh, angles are close to the 90 degrees here and here. And uh, this postulate cannot provide this requirement. Uh, it will be provided by the next one. Two vertical lines, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, in this case, when the elbow joint um, is located exactly on the top of with us, and knee joint is located on the tail set, we can find immediately that the upper arm and upper thigh are slanted uh, optimally. Why? Because in this case, when the upper arm is oblique like at this picture, the angle of the shoulder joint or the shoulder articulation of the humeral scapula is uh, close to the 90 degrees. In this case, upper arm is turning counterclockwise, uh, approaching uh, to this uh, 90 degrees angle. Uh, the same situation concerns the position of the upper thigh, which slant can provide the 90 degrees angle between the upper thigh and sciatic bone. Uh, I think everybody knows that the 90 degrees angle is the best for the function uh, of these joints because of the uh, 
very well-known principle. If we would like to uh, move the body, uh, the um, angle between the power and the body should be perpendicular, then the work will be minimal. The same is here. 90 degrees angle here and 90 degrees angle here provide the minimum of work and a uh, dog is not tiring because of the most economical regime. So one more time, elbow joint, knee joint, uh, beginning of the top line end of the top line. In this case, top of the withers and the very beginning of the spine are on the same vertical. So the elbow joint is the mobile support of the spine in, in its very beginning. As well as the knee joint supports the end of the spine at its very end. And because of that, the uh, disturbances uh, which arising from jumping and falling of the dog are softened due to this uh, support, this mobile support. And it helps the top line remain solid and horizontal. According to this postulate, length of the body and distance between front and rear legs are equal. How could, could it be explained? Also, not too difficult. Uh, let us imagine that the dog construction, that its limbs are deprived of any angulations. And the limbs are like legs of the chair. In this case, legs of the chair. Legs of the chair. And in this case, length of the body and uh, distance between so-called legs will be absolutely the same. But in reality, we have system of liver arms, uh, according to which the uh, dog body is moved forward regarding front limbs and the rear limbs and they are moved on the same distance. Why? Because if they moved to different distances, that means that the dog's strides front and rear will be not equal and they must be equal because this is uh, the condition for the balanced movement. Otherwise, movement will be not balanced. So, I gave you the explanation, very short explanations, of the postulates which integrity <coughs> create, creates the biomechanical model of the dogs. Before to go to the harmonic model, I would like to come back to the very beginning. And uh, I have promised that the biomechanical model of the dogs uh, gives to the judges universal reference points, which help them to increase the objectivity of the assessment of the dog conformation. And now it's a time 
to demonstrate how it works and what are those reference points. They are already known for you. Along the top line, with the hands, you can find out the uh, borders between the anatomical parts of the body, anatomical divisions of the body. And uh, to understand if this border is in the middle of the top line is not difficult, as well as the middle of the rest could be found out also easily. If the top line construction is according to this principle. But if no, your hands will be uh, able to find out immediately deviations of this ratio. And you will uh, be able to say exactly what proportions are given to this concrete dog. So, 2, 1, 1 is the quantitative index which is universal for any breeds belonging to the majority of the breeds. Now it's a time to emphasize that the biomechanical model of the dogs is valid for the majority breeds, maybe for the overwhelming majority of the breeds. Of course, there are some exceptions, but Russian hunting spaniel does not belong to these exceptions. So, um, something else. May I draw your attention to this vertical red line? It is a well known that majority breeds have the elbow joint located in the middle of the distance from the withers to the ground. Uh, or with other words, that the height at elbow and depth of the chest are equal. It is a well known for the majority of the breeds as well as the shoulder blade length and the upper arm length are the same, are equal. That's why the uh, vertical projections, the vertical projections are also equal. And the, the, along this vertical line, dock built is according to one one along this vertical line. And this is a very visible, but somehow nobody has mentioned this proportion. Even it is so very visible. So it is also another reference point for the judge to understand if the shoulder, uh, sorry, elbow joint is in the middle of this distance and the humeroscapular joint is in the middle of this distance. It is easy to find out whether humeroscapular and hip lie on one horizontal line or no as well as the elbow joint and knee joint are located in one horizontal line or no. So, for the judge, there are very easy points, which are at the same time universal reference points. And uh, for the breeders. I told already in the very beginning that the breeders are able to find out the selective algorithm. So, please 
remember now this ratio along the top line and this ratio along the vertical line from the top of withers to the ground. In the framework of the harmonious model of the dogs, I will explain why does it give you the way uh, for the acceleration of your breeding progress. Why do you have already selective algorithm? Now, I am ready to go on. And to tell you about the harmonic model of the dogs. Why uh, this question... Oh, my goodness, no, no, no. no. As usually, as usually um, yeah, I am too fast. Get you spicy much, right? Thank you so much. <laughs> I forgot to tell you how it works when dog is on the move. So, you can see a dog in profile. This is a side movement picture. Yeah? Dog is trotting. And this picture is very pleasant. Uh, we like it. Everything is in balance. And uh, our conclusion is based on our emotional perceptance with uh, uh, without any um, um, explanation explanations except uh, the front and the rest rights which are of the same length and uh, that the top line remains level and uh, solid but to find out deeper uh, what we see, I will use uh, another picture. Just this is this is the drawing when you can see uh, front bones and part of the rib cage, and here you can see <coughs> the bones of the rear limbs. And now we can have a complete picture with the uh, exhaustive explanations of what we see on this picture and why we can, uh, on the emotional level, uh, say that this is a nice picture, that Doc is moving nicely. So, first of all, look at the top line. As I told you, it's already solid and practically level. The next one is that the front and the rest rights are of equal length. You can find out the green lines according to which the shoulder joint or humeroscopial and hip joint are located on one horizontal line, while uh, the elbow joint and knee joint are located on another horizontal line. Uh, besides that, you can see that the blue lines, which create a so-called conditional pendulum, um, uh, create the boundaries of the limbs span uh, when uh, the limbs uh, in swing are inscribed in this angle. Uh, you can find out that the legs from the opposite side are converging to the base of the vertical line lowered from the point of intersection from the axis of the pendulum where the center of gravity is located. Why is it important? And this is of great importance because this criterion provides 
the best position for the most stable uh, movement at this phase. What do I mean? Try to uh, imagine that you are in the bus. Um, where must you stay that your wobbling could be minimal? To minimize the wobbling, what is the best place for your uh, stand, for your standing? Of course, you have find out the center of gravity. And here is the same, you can see. At this stage of support, when the, the hind leg is exactly under this, this vertical line, uh, the best condition for the uh, <coughs> stability is provided. And the last one, but not the least. You can see this lilac line, which connects the eye and the paw of the front leg at the moment of landing or close to it. And uh, the, this line is lowered from the eye. And this is also very important because of the uh, acoustic apparatus, which is in charge of dock equilibrium, and it is located in the ear. And uh, the uh, landing should be a little bit in advance to provide the best equilibrium when dog is landing. So, I have explained you the whole picture and uh, noticed the all criterions uh, which, which could be easily used. So, now I'm really ready to go further go on. At the same time, I have to notice that without any knowledge, uh, with the inborn ability, the human are able uh, to differ beauty and ugly things. Why? Uh, People do not know anything about the harmony, about the proportions. Uh, but according to the feeling, they are able immediately to say, oh, this is beautiful, or opposite, this is really ugly. How could they do that? It was a very interesting question to me many, many years ago. And the answer to this question I have found out in 1987. And many times after that it was checked and confirmed uh, with the different breeds. You can imagine how many times it was done because in this year it will be 54 years of my judging uh, practice, of my judging experience. And the answer is that the human eye is tuned to the golden section as well as the human ear. And this is the reason why people are able to appreciate the beauty. What is the golden section? The golden section is the universal form building principle, which was known 
in the ancient time, and uh, the best example of this time is the, the Egyptian pyramids. Uh, later on, it was well known in the ancient Greece for the sculptures and architects. It was well known already at that time for scientists, try, do not forget Kepler, who uh, uh, discovered the locations of the planet of the sunny system, and it was based on the golden section. A time of Renaissance, and coming to this time, I have to uh, give you two uh, names. The names were Luca Pacioli and Leonardo da Vinci. They lived in the 16th century, and uh, the golden section is the concept is the name given by the Leonardo da Vinci, even <coughs> before him. The name of this principle was different. But let me tell you something uh, about the story happened before. Uh, I told you that it was very well known for the ancient times and uh, for the scientists as well. And uh, uh, Euclid, who lived three centuries before Christ, has given the formal uh, definition of this principle. Uh, and the uh, name of this principle, according to Euclid, was division of the segment in the extreme and mean ratio. What does it mean? The whole segment O1 is divided by point X according to the extreme and mean ratio, if the whole segment to the its biggest part is equal. 1 to x is equal to its biggest part to the smallest one. Biggest part to the smallest one. And this proportion could be easily transformed into the square equation. Which positive root you can see in front of you at the screen. This is that. If we will calculate this uh, number and look for the rough approximations, the third approximation is 0.618. The second one, more rough, will be 0 0.62. And the most rough approximation will be 0 0.6 or 3 to 5. Let me go ahead from the Euclid time to the 16th century. And remember one more time, Luca Pacioli and Leonardo da Vinci. Luca Pacioli was Italian monk, he was a mathematician, and he wrote the book named La Proporzione Divina, or Divine Proportion, or Proportion Given by God. Listen to it, please. According to Luca Pacioli, this La Proporze Divina was the law of harmony of the universe. Twelve, twelve features of this principle uh, were uh, set out in his book, and uh, Leonardo da Vinci was the only illustrator of this book. But Leonardo da Vinci 
renamed this uh, La Proporze Divina into golden section. He called it Sectio Aureo. And uh, this name became so famous that only this name is well known for this principle nowadays. Not too many people know that initial name was La Proporze Divina. Before uh, these scientists, four centuries before, another Leonardo, Leonardo Fibonacci, who lived in Pisa, uh, was solving the problem and the result, uh, the, sorry, the result was sequence, which is in front of you. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and on. Uh, it was very easily built sequence. Look at this, please. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, and on. This sequence number 1 could be easily transform, modified or transformed to the sequence number two. What is the way? I will divide each previous member of Fibonacci to the next one. If I divide one to one, it will be one. One to two, it will be one second. Two third, three fifth, five eighth, eight thirteenth, and on and uh, which is extremely important. The limit of the sequence is this number, is the golden section. So it's another definition of the golden section. And uh, now it is easy to understand that each member of this sequence is approximation of the golden section. In the beginning, it's quite rough approximation, and uh, later on, it's becoming more and more fine. But for our uh, uh, conversations, for our practice, uh, we will use this one, three to five. You can see it immediately here. I have highlighted in the same color here because uh, of our measurements. And our measurements uh, couldn't be done without measurement mistakes. That's why three to five is quite enough uh, that we could understand that this is the golden section. And now I, I go, I approach, to the very special moment of my researches, which I, I could uh, give the name, the moment of truth. Please take a look at these three numbers. I highlight it in right in the first sequence. One, one, two. If I consider them in the reverse way, it will be two, one, one. And uh, you can uh, immediately see the numbers which are in charge of the spinal proportions of the dog. Where two units fall on the back, one unit falls on the loin, and last one unit falls on the sacrum. Without these numbers, this sequence could not be built as well as the second one. So, if the numbers do not exist as the uh, numbers uh, 
according to which the top line is built, then perfection will be never approached. You can understand it. This is the sequence which limit is golden section and golden section is the sign of perfection. Without these initial three numbers, the sequence could not be built. That's why it is the explanation why the first postulate based on these numbers. Why these numbers uh, give the very first tuning of the dog harmony to the golden section. Either a long top line or a long to vertical line, I noticed you short time ago. I believe that now everything is easy. Um, I told you, you uh, told you that this principle is the universal, and this is true. This is, there is a lot of examples of its influence. Uh, our time today is limited, and topic of today is not a golden section. I can only use short explanation of this principle I will be um, going to use when uh, f finding out the harmonious proportions of the dog construction. Uh, so uh, let me let me illustrate this principle by very uh, little number of uh, its influence. And the first one will be egg. The egg which Fabergé considered as the symbol of harmony. The egg is built according to the golden section because its cross diameter to the longitudinal diameter is three to five. And uh, for our eyes, the shape of the egg is really beautiful. But not less important is that the, this construction is most durable construction. It is practically impossible uh, to destroy the egg squeezing in your hands evenly. And this durability is because of the function of the egg. And the function is to protect the embryo. So, the golden section is the principle which provides both beautiful shapes and optimal functions of the shapes of, of these structures. Let me not to give you any more the examples. I can all suggest to you if you are interested in these examples and the, in the more detailed explanations of principle uh, principles uh, I set out to you. I can suggest you to read my book, Dog Conformation and its Evaluation. Uh, which is available in Our Dogs in UK by Vincent Hogan. So, uh, now you can understand. If everything in the world is under the influence of the golden section, then the dog's structure, dog's build, dog's conformation, could not avoid this principle, and it didn't avoid. Now it's the time to tell you about the harmonious proportions of the dogs. 
The first harmonious proportion is depth of the chest to the length of top line is the golden section. May I draw attention? I measure depth of the chest from, from the breastbone. And the very end is the top of the withers. And the length of the top line I'm measuring from the joint between neck and back. So, namely from the first thoracic vertebra spine, spine, spine process to the end of the top line where is the tail set located? So, green line to the red line creates golden section. Three to five. And uh, the next one is the ratio between length of the chest and uh, length of the body. One more time, I have to mention that the very beginning of this red line is a point of sternum, not point of humerus scapula. And this is the very end of the buttock. And length of the chest ends where the last rib crosses this red line. Uh, let me uh, notice that it could be considered as the segment O1. Then, this is the point X. And then, the whole length to its biggest part, to the biggest part of this segment is the same as the length of the biggest part to the smallest one. Uh, I think now is the time to explain you <coughs> why the beaches are, and because of what, more long-bodied than the dogs. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Very often, uh, I hear that the people are saying, of course, because of the more long loin by the beaches. And this is the delusion. This is wrong. Because this proportion, 2, 1, 1, does not depend on the sex. It is the same, either for the males or for the females. Then we have the question, why nevertheless length of the female's body is more the length of the male's body. Easy to understand. By the females, this pelvic bone, sciatic bone, is longer than by males, which based on the function the beaches uh, should provide the best well-being. But now you can see, if this part is becoming longer, then ratio between chest part and the rest is violated. And it is no more, no anymore, 
five to three. The golden section is violated. And the only way to restore the golden section is to develop more fortress in females. So, body of the female is longer because of the two prominent, two more prominent parts. Batok is more prominent and four chest is more prominent. And then ratio is restored. It will be exactly golden section, but not the top line proportions are reason for that. They remain the same. Length of the body to the length of the diameter is three to five is golden section. Uh, it's not necessary to uh, repeat the definition of the length of the body, it's easy. But what is the diameter? What is the this blue line which connects occiput and pore of the rear leg placed behind to the vertical rear pasta? In reality, the occiput and uh, this foot do not locate it in one vertical plane which is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. That's why we have to consider projection of this blue line to that vertical plane which is really parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. It's very easy to, to demonstrate in practice. Uh, but one more time, you have to uh, try to understand exactly what I'm saying. Height at elbow, elbow joint, not elbow aln. And uh, sum of length, head and neck, Great golden section. <clears throat> oh. Maybe it's a time um, to give the illustration of how it uh, proportion works. Neck and head are moved forward so much as much the foreleg should be forward that the vertical line from the eye to the paw of the landed foreleg could lie on one vertical line. And this is possible only when height at elbows and uh, sum of lengths head and neck create golden section. Uh, girth or circumference of the muzzle and girth of the skull create golden section. One small explanation. Uh, you remember the egg and its very special durability. Uh, egg shape. Maximum bite power is provided by this ratio. And uh, when <coughs> this power should be extreme, like by Bull, uh, Bull, Bull Terrier or Barzoi, the head shape is becoming very close to the egg shape. Okay, this is the last harmonious proportion. And uh, <coughs> now I would like to explain to the breeders 
And how could they uh, consider this approach uh, to get the uh, selective algorithm? Look at this, please. One more time. Two, one, one along the top line and two, one, one along this vertical line. As I told you already, this is the initial tuning to the golden section of the dog's conformation. And which is extremely important that this initial tuning will lead to the all harmonious proportions which will be uh, approaching very close to the golden section. It is not necessary to think about the golden sections, uh, about the golden uh, proportions, about the harmonious proportions of the dog. They will be received automatically if your selection will be directed to this principle along the top line and along this vertical line. It is enough. <clears throat> and of course you have to be careful with these lines. To the horizontal line, to vertical lines, and all together they will give you the key for the way how to accelerate the breeding progress. Now, we have the tools for the uh, considering and analyzing of the standard of the Russian hunting spaniel. I go to the text of the standard. The breed is not recognized yet by the FCI. And this is confirmed, this is approved by the Russian Kinological Federation on the 29th of January 2020. Um, utilization, hunting dog on swampy meadow, field, step, upland and water game. FCI classification, retrievers, flushing dogs and water dogs, section 2 flushing dogs with working trial. Just a moment. A brief historical summary. Russian hunting spaniel is a Russian gun dog breed which that is included in a big flushing dogs group. The history of the Russian hunting spaniel starts at the end of 19th century when the various flushing dog breeds, mostly of English origin, began to be imported to Russia. At the beginning of 20th century, Spaniel lovers began to select more high-legged and vigorous dogs for their breeding that suited better for hunting fowl in Russia. <coughs> By the end of 30s of the 20th century, a large population of Spaniels formed in Russia. It did not fit into any of, of the known breeds in the group and it had a number of common characteristics. The formation of Russian hunting spaniel breed continued after the Second World War ended. A focused selective work allowed to create a desired breed type on the basis of the livestock preserved during the war as well as the imported specimens. The first standard of the Russian hunting spaniel was developed and adopted in 1951. Just a moment. General appearance. Long coated hunting dog, below medium size, moderately long body. 
Strong bone and general harmony provide endurance and agility in work. Sloping top line is typical, especially in males. Sexual dimorphism is clearly pronounced. Important proportions. The length of the body from point of shoulders to the point of buttock exceeds the height at the withers at 10 to 15 for males percent and 15 to 20 percent for females. Height uh, at elbow corresponds to the half <coughs> of the height at withers. The length of the muzzle is equal to the length of the skull. Behavior, temperament. Russian hunting spaniel is hard working, enduring, smart, sociable, and a friendly dog. Head lean, moderately long in proportion to the dog's size, more refined in females. Cranial region. Oval shaped, um, cr cranial region. Oval shaped when viewed from above, moderately flat when viewed from the side. Uh, lines of skull and muzzle in profile are parallel. Skull moderately broad. Superciliary ridges are rather well developed. Uh, the occiput is slightly pronounced. Stop, moderately pronounced. Facial region, nose. Wide with the open nostrils, preferably black. Brown and brown white dogs have brown nose. Muzzle, broad when viewed from above. A little narrower than the skull. Somewhat tapering towards the nose. The length of the muzzle is equal to the length of the skull. <laughs> Lips. Lean, closely fitting, pigmented according to the color. When viewed from the side, the upper lip shape is close to rectangular, uh, with the, which is slightly rounded in the front. Jaws, teeth. Teeth are sound, strong, white, well developed, standing tightly, full dental formula, scissor bite. Cheeks, not prominent. Eyes, moderately large, oval shaped, set straight. Dark brown or brown in color, preferably dark. Light brown is acceptable for brown and brown white dogs. Eyelids are lean, close <coughs> fitting, pigmented. Yes. Set above eye level in line with the eyes is also acceptable. Hanging mobile close to the cheeks, rounded and broad at tips. Long the edge reach the nose. Ears are covered with a long, slightly wavy and silky coat. Medium set, smoothly moving into shoulders. Oval in the cross section, muscular without throatness. The length of the neck is almost equal to the length of the head. Body, 
top line. Slightly sloping from with us to the base of the tail. With us. Pronounced. Especially in males. Back. Straight. Strong. Moderately broad. Muscular. Loin. Broad. Muscular. Springy. Slightly arched. Croup. Broad. Moderately long. <laughs> slightly sloping. Muscular. Chest. Long. Moderately broad and deep. Oval in shape with well developed false ribs. Underline and belly moderately tucked up. Uh, it is a time to consider deeper uh, details of the body construction. Let us uh, start from the statement of the long chest. <coughs> long chest uh, cannot be without the long upper part. So <coughs> the back is long. And uh, the loin should be short. And uh, it is a technical mistake why the short loin is not mentioned in the standard. Because otherwise, without short loin, the body construction could not be compact. So, uh, our principle, our universal principle, is valid for the Russian hunting spaniel. And 211 are typical for its proportions along the top line and along the vertical line from the top of with us to the ground, uh, which uh, you can find out in the comments given to the standard. Uh, these comments are not considered. Uh, right now because I give my own comments. And in many things they repeat the statement and the, the specific of the construction. I tell you when considering and analyzing um, specific of this breed proportions. Tail set in line with the top line, cropped at half length, rather thick at base, gradually tapering to the top, to the tip. At rest, the dog carries it harmoniously in line with the top line. Males, when alert, can carry it a little higher. The tail is lively and well covered with the featherings. In, in the countries where the tail cropping, tail docking, is prohibited, natural tail is acceptable. It has a sable shape or maybe straight, reaching to the hawk joint. So, easy. Limbs, general appearance. With good bone, straight and parallel seen from the front. Shoulders, shoulder blades, muscular, oblique, shoulder angulation is almost 100 degrees. <coughs> Upper arm, rather long, with a well-developed muscles. Elbows, 
directly directed slightly straightly backwards forearm straight pastern strong slightly sloping when seen from the side hindquarters general appearance with well developed muscles seen from the back straight and parallel seen from the side well angulated thigh and lower thigh almost of the same length forming an angle of approximately 125 degrees thighs are oblique with the well muscles hot joint well angulated rear pastern straight strong vertically set Duclos must be removed in the countries where it is not pro prohibited by law. Front and high feet rounded, arched with a tight feet and thick coat between them. Nails may be of any color, pads are hard. Gait movement free, efficient balanced in all gates when speed increases the dog may start moving in a light gallop upper coat is moderately long shiny straight or slightly wavy close to the body coat is short and straight on the head and the front sides of the legs It is moderately long and dense on the upper part of neck, back, chest, on the belly, and at the back side of the fore and hind legs. On the ears and lower part of the tail, coat is longer soft wavy and forms featherings and fringe coat is thick and brushy between the tooth color pied and spotted color colors black white brown white red white black white and tan brown white and tan maybe with a with or without speckles Speckles may be abundant or not sparse. Uh, sorry, or sparse. Solid colors, black, red, brown, black and tan, brown and tan, may have small white spots on the chest, throat and paws. Height at widths. Males, 40 to 45 centimeters. Females, 38 to 43 centimeters severe faults coarse or light build weak physical development loose skin in folds uh, excitability apathy phlegmatism sexual dimorphism is not pronounced short or too long body very light yellow Amber eyes in all colors, dumpish eyelids or and depigmented eyelids, harsh curly coat on body and neck, ruffled woolly short coat, absence of the cover coat. A dog carries its tail over the top line at more than 45 degrees at rest. Kinked tail, absence of more than 2p1 absence of 1p2 p3 presence of two extra uh, uh, p1 uh, height at widths less than 39 centimeters for males and less than 37 centimeters for females height at widths more than 47 centimeters for males 
and more than 35 centimeters for females. Disqualifying, disqualifying faults. Aggressive to human or over the overly shy temperament. Any departure of scissor bite, regardless of severity. Wry mouth. Presence of extra incisors or and canines. Absence of one or and more incisors. Absence of at least one canine. Absence of at least one tooth, except of P1, P2, P3, and molars, M3. Any color except the ones listed in the standard. Nose and lips color not mentioned in the standard. Inborn bobtail, cryptohedism. Any dogs clearly showing physical or behavioral abnormalities that influence its health and welfare or its ability to perform its traditional work. And uh, this is the end of the standard. You can see in front of you, in my opinion, very nice drawings of this breed. In the reality, this perfection we can see not too often, because the hunting people are very special, and they are looking more for their working qualities, for their working abilities, than for perfection confirmation, perfect confirmation. So let us look at the photos of real dogs and analyze what we see. Long-bodied, a little bit short-legged, uh, short strong dog. Head is long with a rounded skull, nice neck length and set, excellent top line, excellent depth of the chest, excellent developed fore chest, correct angulations in front and in the rear, and the most uh, um, uh, expressed um, demerit is the uh, not too long uh, limbs, a bit too short. And the second, too rounded skull. Moderately long-bodied uh, dog. I don't see exactly. Is, is this the dog or the bitch? So let us uh, uh, ignore it. I will describe only uh, things which are clearly visible. Moderately long body, with a good depth of the body uh, and correct length of the limbs. Strong in bones. Head is quite long, too prominent for head. Neck is long enough. Correct top line with a prom rather pronounced with us. Uh, croup could be a little bit longer. Um, well developed for chest. Uh, enough angulated in front, correctly angulated behind correct color, and that's it. Long-bodied, high-legged, a bit too light in bones. Nevertheless, body is solid, head is long enough, too rounded over skull, not parallel planes, rather long, correctly set neck, Developed with us, correct top line. Um, chest could be deeper, enough prominent for chest. Uh, enough, enough front angulations, correct rear angulations. Uh, long bodied, deep chested, strong male. <coughs> with a solid body, 
with a rather long head with a too rounded skull and uh, too deep stop. Medium long neck, nice top line, especially because of the tension of the dog as the whole. Excellent front angulation, correct rear angulations. Uh, and uh, this is a very nice dog, except the shape of the head, especially uh, partially shape of the skull. Moderately long bodied, probably this is the bitch, probably. Um, light in bones, um, head is in proportion to the whole body, a bit too rounded, a bit too rounded over skull, medium long neck, strong back, a bit too sloping croup, with us could be better developed, rather deep chest, um, angulations, front angulations are enough because you can see that the foreleg does not reach to the vertical lowered from the eye. Uh, moderately angulated behind. Long enough in body, oh, deep chested dog with a solid body, strong in bones. Head is long, two rounded skull, medium long neck, correct top line and tail set. <coughs> correct front angulations. Enough angulated in the rear. <coughs> Just a moment. It is difficult to evaluate this dog because of the grass and that's why vertical proportions are presented not the best. Uh, the same situation is here. What we can see exactly, um, I will describe. Medium long bodied dog, uh, deep chested, with the correct top line, a little bit low set tail. Head is long uh, with the flat uh, of, uh, skull and correct stop to the long muzzle of correct shape, moderately long neck, uh, well-developed chest and forward chest, correct front angulations, rear angulations could be better. One more time, grass Uh, cannot give us the true idea of this dog, but uh, I will describe only what we can see exactly. Moderately long body, deep chested with a solid body. Long head, uh, strong enough muzzle. Um, shape of the front uh, uh, edge of the lip could be more blunt a bit too rounded skull, long neck, uh, enough developed with us, strong back, short loin, two sloping croup, well developed chest, enough fore chest and enough front angulation. You can see elbow and you can see where is located the with us. Elbow joint is in front of with us. So, that's why the front angulation is only enough, as well as the rear. Rear angulations are straight. Uh, the dog is pictured from above, which uh, changes its uh, proportions. And uh, the dog, maybe this is the bitch, I don't know, looks a bit too short-legged. I don't know how does it look like in reality. Uh, rather long body, deep chested, strong bones, long head, 
of a good shape, long enough neck, developed with us, correct top line and tail set, uh, enough front angulations and enough rear angulations. Uh, moderately long bodied dog, deep chested, body is solid, bones are strong, head is long, too ab abrupt stop, rather flat over skull, long enough neck, correct top line and tail set. Now, difficult to say, say exactly about the front angulations. Rear angulations are okay. At the picture which dog is standing not so naturally, we can say that uh, front angulations are okay, but how does it like in reality? I can only suppose. A slightly long bodied dog, deep chested, uh, strong enough in bones, long head with a two rounded skull, uh, stop should be more distinctive long enough neck developed with us rather strong back short loin two sloping croup and two low set tail uh, uh, chest is deep prominent enough in front um, enough front angulations correct rear angulations uh, moderately long bodied, uh, deep chested dog with a solid body and strong bones. Long head with a parallel planes, a bit too deep uh, stop. Uh, correct length and set on the neck, correct top line with a well developed with us, strong back and short loin. Slightly sloping croup, excellent developed chest and forechest, correct front angulations, moderately angulated behind, and this is the picture, this one. Also pictures from above. Look, uh, long bodied, slightly short length, deep chest. It is quite long strong enough under jaw, long enough neck, well developed with us, strong back, two sloping croup, well developed chest and forward chest, enough front angulation, look at the position of the elbow joint and location of the with us. Yep. Uh, it seems that the rear angulations are okay, but I can see looking at the rear leg from the opposite side. Moderately long bodied, uh, long legged enough, dog with a solid body, long head, a bit too rounded skull, uh, distinctive enough stop a bit too wet lips and uh, uh, shape of the uh, edge of the upper lip <coughs> be more blunt uh, deep chest enough prominent fore chest a bit straight in front and in the rear uh, a lot of grass so I describe only length of the body, which is okay. Deep chest, uh, long head with a rounded skull. Stop should be more distinctive. Long neck, uh, pronounced with us. Strong back, short top line, you can see. You can look at the shadow and understand what is the length of the loin. A bit too sloping croup. Excellent front angulations. 
correct rear angulations. Uh, somewhat long bodied, uh, with the correct depth of the body, solid body, long enough head, rounded skull, enough pronounced stop, light muzzle, um, medium long neck, pronounced with us, slight depression after with us, uh, strong enough back to uh, round it and a little bit falling away croup. Uh, 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 well developed chest and fore chest, enough front and the rear angulations. Uh, light in general, almost square body. Uh, with the, I will describe it later on. Um, head is uh, long enough, a bit to round its skull. Uh, stop should be better marked. Long enough neck. Developed with us. A bit to arch back, loin, and sloping croup chest is developed not enough doesn't reach to the elbow level uh, uh, actual depth is missing as well as the fortress should be much more prominent straight in front only enough angulated in the rear moderately long bodied deep chested dog strong in bones Long head um, with a flat enough over skull and strong enough muzzle. Long neck enough developed with us, strong back, short loin, sloping croup. Excellent develop uh, chest in depth and in front. <coughs> um, angulations are uh, correct. This one, long bodied, high legged, uh, strong enough in bones. Uh, I cannot say anything about the head because it's turned aside. A long neck, somewhat developed with us, uh, strong back and short loin, two sloping chest is quite deep but four chest is missing as well as uh, front angulations are open uh, straight correct angulated in the rear uh, what i can say exactly solid body with a well-developed chest uh, long head could be stronger as the whole, uh, enough marked stop. Uh, muzzle should be cut better, a little bit too uh, acute. Long neck, dog is standing uh, artificially, so I cannot say exactly what I can <clears throat> see here top line is a little bit arched because the dog is supported under the, the belly uh, deep enough chest nothing about front angulation i cannot evaluate it and uh, a bit too artificially bent <coughs> in uh, stifles rear leg Square bodied, light in general. Head is large, strong, enough marked stop, flat enough over skull. Long neck, uh, with us is missing, strong back, and uh, slightly arched loin, 
crop is sloping and very short. Enough developed chest in depth and in front. And the angulations both are straight, either in front or in the rear. Medium <laughs> long bodied dog with a good depth of the body, strong in bones. Um, head is a little bit turned aside, but what we can see that the parallel plane that the parallel planes are missing. These planes are not parallel, and the stop should be marked better, as well as the shape of the front edge of the upper lips should be more blunt. Long neck, enough developed with us, small depression, a little bit too arched back and loin, and sloping croup, falling away, practically abrupt. Uh, excellent develop chest, correct angulations in front and in the rear. Here, dogs are cut by the grass. We can see long body with a good developed chest and correct top line. Head is a bit too light in general, uh, too a bit too rounded skull, too light muzzle, long neck, um, rather developed with us, correct top line uh, in general. Uh, chest is uh, quite deep and massive enough. Um, probably front angulations are correct and correct rear angulations. Nothing about the vertical proportions, which, because the legs um, are hidden. Slightly long body, deep chest, with a solid body, strong in bones, with a rather long neck, uh, head, sorry, rounded skull and uh, two uh, light muzzle, which is accentuated by the acute shape of the upper lips, lips in front. Uh, top line is okay. Crop could be longer and less sloping well-developed chest and forward chest, correct angulations in front and in the rear. Croup is too short and uh, too sloppy. And uh, uh, faults of the head are visible. In this case, the dog is short legged, long body. Uh, the head is long, but could be stronger in general, with better marked stop and more with a more depth of the muzzle. Long neck, uh, pronounced with us, is a bit too short, should be longer. Um, strong back, slightly arched loin, Two dropping croup and two low set tail. Excellent developed chest and forward chest. Uh, enough front angulations. You can see this is the elbow joint, and here is the vertical line lowered from the withers. Excellent angulations in the rear. I think that we. <clears throat> so enough pictures and uh, that's why we have uh, the idea about the type and uh, most uh, typical faults.
if you keep in your mind the, the initial drawing, it will be easier to evaluate uh, in reality these dogs, especially because of the tools I gave you for the better and more objective assessment. So, I think that uh, the lecture could be over. Uh, and uh, should you have any questions, I would be glad, glad to give the answers. So, I'm listening to you, please. Do we have any questions? No. No? No. No questions. Uh huh. I think everything was clear enough. Oh, my goodness. I'm very glad. I was trying uh, to do all my best and I don't know if, if I succeeded. Thank you very much one more time for your coming. Thank you very much for your interest in our native breeds, which expect for the recognition by the FCI. And I believe it will happen in the future. And this future is not so far away from the present day. Yes, for the certain breed, <coughs> all, the, all the stuff. <coughs> So we really hope it will be soon. <coughs> so, just a moment. <coughs> we will meet again next Tuesday, and the topic of the next lecture will be um, Russian colored bichon. So. I will be, uh, I will try to prepare everything required for the best explanation of this breed, which is uh, not so well uh, known abroad. So, please welcome and uh, let's meet again. See you soon. See you soon. All the best.